beautiful soul and welcome to the Oracle of Atlantis with me, Belair. So we are going to get into your Oracle messages at this time and what you need to know. So I am working mainly with the Oracle of the Unicorns. As well as the Ethereal Visions Tarot. The Daily Crystal Inspiration. And possibly the Millennium Toth Tarot. So I hope you're hope you're doing well out there. Um, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a turning member, welcome back. So I do um, read from the guidebooks in my readings. I will interpret the tarot how I see it, but I do like to read the oracle cards because you may you never know what you're gonna pick up from it, right? So let's get into your your reading. First, let's take a look at your spread here. This is your overall spread viewer. So the first card that wants to come out for you, we have the energy of past lives. Past lives released your past karma. You are an old soul with deep wisdom. Healing your past lives will raise your vibration. So past lives. There's definitely something coming through with past life energy. The clarifying card from the Ethereal Visions Tarot, we do have the Lovers. So this definitely could have something to do with like a soul contract, um, a soulmate type of ex like a type of experience that you were meant to experience right you experienced in the past life because there was something you needed to gain from this wisdom the clarifying cards that want to come out for the energy of the lovers which is connected to gemini by the way we have the six of swords so this definitely could have been you walked away from something and the ace of pentacles for perhaps a a better opportunity right you could have even left somebody for perhaps even a job it's kind of that energy it's almost like you've left love to move on to different horizons to expand yourself perhaps to learn more to travel your journey on your own you are an old soul who has journeyed through many different lifetimes and gained deep knowledge on your way. Your present situation requires you to either tap into your ancient wisdom for the answers or release a block that you've carried forward from another incarnation. You may have some deep fear from a previous time that is being brought to the surface so it can be released for good. There may be people you still hold karmic agreements with. Clearing these agreements is now possible, and this will allow you to move forward on your own path. It may be time for you to remember the soul gifts that have been locked away and are now ready to be shared with the world. As an old soul, you have evolved over centuries. It is time for you to use your knowledge to awaken and ascend in this lifetime and to help others do the same. Spend some time sitting quietly in meditation and ask this mystical unicorn to guide you back to the answers or the healing you need, or to help you unleash your hidden gifts. Your past lives hold treasures that can help you rise into your power and create the life of abundance, joy, and freedom that you desire. I'm, I keep seeing the sacral chakra in my third eye. There's almost like um, energy swimming around in your sacral chakra, which would make sense. Um, I definitely would suggest working with meditations for the sacral chakra or just intentionally breathing into the sacral, sacral chakra area, which is um, below the belly button, right? It is the lower stomach. Um, but this could be definitely easy to connect to your past lives through the chakra because it is the waters of the womb, right? So... Um, it would connect to your your mother's waters and her mother's and so on and so on and so on and so on, right? Like through the um, umbilical cord, you may actually be able to meditate and traverse through your past lives in this energy. So definitely I would suggest um, working with the sacral chakra. There are lots of YouTube or meditations on YouTube to do such thing. 
the next guide that wants to come out, we have the guide of support. Ask for help, get more rest, and nurture yourself. So you definitely have support around you at this time. Whether or not you use it is up to you. Um, but if you are feeling yourself tired and burnt out, you may need to ask for support. You may need to ask even just to take some time off to rest, right? To not have to do anything. Um, the clarifying cards, you do have the card of justice. Which is what you're seeking support in. Some sort of balance or um, closure to a situation here. It is involving a Queen of Wands type of energy. So the Queen of Wands can be very like powerful and charismatic. This could have been somebody that like um, you almost feel burnt by. That you're seeking some sort of justice is actually the energy I'm getting with this. But the Queen of Wands can also be very... Um, magnetic drawing to her that which she needs very creative and expansive right so maybe you need help finding your balance to become this queen of Ener queen of wands type of energy once again it's interesting i'm just noticing both these women here are kind of holding a staff or a sword right in their right hand raising the right hand above the left hand um so this could be a call to even give support to somebody at this time that may need your support. But this is also signaling to me to follow the right path for you. Like not to, if somebody has done you harm, not to purposely try to hurt them to get your own karmic reward here, right? Do things on the up and up. Do it to a level of your own moral and ethical code and there will be justice. Feeling tired, burnt out, overwhelmed, or overworked is a call to lighten your load and recharge your batteries. Your energy levels are low and it is proving counterproductive to getting things done or being there for others. You may feel you have to do everything yourself or don't know who to ask for help. A part of you could be addicted to the adrenaline rush of stress and hustle. You may even feel it as a sign of weakness to slow down or that you don't deserve to be nurtured. You have nothing to prove by working yourself too hard or sacrificing yourself by doing everything alone. This winged horse urges you to ask for help, to get more rest, and to be loving to your body. Schedule in non-negotiable time for naps. Set boundaries around your work hours and make getting a good night's sleep a priority. Hire an assistant or other team members for your business. Spend the day at a spa Book in for a massage or other body treatments, or simply take a day off to do nothing. Ask your friends and family for help with your kids, or invest in additional childcare or a nanny. You are worthy of the support. The extra energy you will have as a result will be worth the time and money you spend to give it to yourself. The next card, you have the card of strength. This challenge will make you stronger. You will get through to the other side. Look for the gifts in this situation. I do love this card. It actually reminds me of a gift that my grandmother gave to me when I was, I don't even know, five years old, maybe. One year for Easter, she gave me this little glass black unicorn, kind of like this. It was like, um, not really a baby unicorn but not a full adult either and it was just kind of nestling into itself on its like knees sleeping and I ended up trading it in my later years to a friend of mine she had this big black panther stuffy that I love so we traded I haven't seen the unicorn since it's funny how things come back to us right definitely in this past life energy there could be old memories coming back that are helping you build some strength or even recognize your own strength. When pressure is applied to coal, it transforms into glittering diamonds. We are similarly tested at points on our soul journey so our hearts can let in more love, our wisdom can deepen, and we can rise higher into our light. You may be facing a challenge by grieving for a loved one or have had your heart broken. You may be feeling scared and alone. Call on the unicorns to hold you, love you, and support you. 
let them carry you on their backs as you go through this deep initiation and i just keep seeing the unicorn's eye as i'm reading So it is purple in color, which is connecting me to the crown chakra. So the crown chakra may be another chakra you want to work with. The crown chakra is located at the top of the head and is said to open to connect to divine wisdom. You could get some spiritual strength and support through the crown chakra. You may be facing a challenge. Be grieving for a loved one or have had your heart broken. You may be feeling scared and alone. Call on the unicorns to hold you, love you, and support you. Let them carry you on their backs as you go through this deep initiation. Let yourself grieve or feel vulnerable for as long as you need to in order to fully heal. Know that you do have the strength to come through the other side, and you will. You have been through many trials in many lifetimes, and you have prevailed through all of them. When you are ready, look for the hidden gifts in this experience and the reason your soul called it in for you at this time. Know that just like the piece of coal, you will emerge from this experience glittering and bright like a diamond. Angel number 66. The number 66 is a sign of balance, harmony, and love. It is a positive message from the angels that you are on the right track. If you keep seeing this number, it is a sign that you are surrounded by love and support, which was interesting because support was the, the card right before, right? Use the number 66 in your life to help you find balance and harmony. So 66 reduced would be a 12, which I do connect to the House of Pisces. And the House of Pisces is all about self-undoing and awakening. So it's releasing what is no longer serving you, what is not actually true about yourself. It could even be lies that you've told yourself or other people have told you over the years that are only hindering your progress, releasing that and awakening to who you truly are. Now, the clarifying card, we have the energy of the well. I was really getting this energy of your strength actually resides within your dreams, like the wishing well, right? The dreams that you hope to aspire to don't quit before the magic happens because clarifying the well, you do have the magician's energy. And the magician is the perfect person to manifest your dreams. The, ma the, the magician knows how to balance all the elements of life to create magic itself. So the well energy is connected to Gaia. Nurturing, opportunity, nature, and creativity. This is where you'll find your support. The well is the birthplace of ideas, inspiration, and transformation. All things are birthed from the creatrix, and knowledge flows freely to those who seek it. So that's interesting. It was coming up with that third eye chakra, or not third eye, sorry, the crown chakra, right? Opening to divine source to receive wisdom. While the magician is connected to Mercury, skill, confidence, action, concentration, and accomplishment, the magician connects the spirit to the physical he represents as above and so below. So that's like turning your dreams into reality, right? He is the master of all four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. He is telling you that you hold all the tools to manifest your desires into reality. Creativity, skill, focus, and desire are the forces he reveals to you in order to accomplish any goal. Creativity, skill, and focus with, along with desire are the forces used to accomplish any goal. Well, there you have it. Now, the last unicorn you have is the unicorn of partnership. Teamwork will give you a better result. Find trustworthy people to partner with. Build up a talented support team. Right? Support. That's where you find your strength. And partnerships. Clarifying this energy, you have the Six of Wands, so there is some sort of victory and success within partnerships. There are successful partnerships around you, perhaps, or there's about to be. The clarifying cards, you have the Nine of Cups, feeling emotionally content after a time of feeling left out or outcasted with the Five of Pentacles. 
Um, I could see this in another way too. This could very much um, like be a single parent here struggling to get by, perhaps needing a little extra support. Um, if that's the case in your area, there's usually always um, some sort of government funded um, supports, right? You may have to look for them. But there is some sort of victory in partnerships here that causes like this emotional contentment, emotional satisfaction, like you're finally feeling emotionally satisfied with where you are, perhaps after a time of feeling very lost and confused here with the Five of Pentacles is energy. Now the crystal I pulled for you to work with the energy of your own strength at this time. We have the Rainbow Obsidian with Heal Your Heart. You are strong and resilient, and you are capable of working through the deepest of human emotions. The heart is both the most fragile and most powerful element of our physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Trust that no matter how exposed or pained you may feel, you have the power to recover and heal. From the loss of a loved one, a relationship, a beloved pet, or even a job, we've all experienced grief. Whether the event happened recently or long ago, a variety of emotions may surface at any given time as part of the grieving process. Allow your emotions to come up so you can acknowledge and then release them in order to fill the space with new love, new light, and hope. When have you experienced a loss of any kind? Did you allow yourself the time and space to grieve? What would aid your grieving process? The affirmation. To feel is to heal. Today, give yourself permission to feel whatever emotions come up. Let them go and cry if you need to, so you can create space to heal. So this is going to help you because the underlying energy, we do have the agate crystal with getting back into balance. We also have this truth or clarity coming through. It may actually come through somebody else like um, a truth that is offered to you with the page of swords that gives you new insight. Um, this can come through your own intuition as well. I am getting that this is actually going to be like spoken words from a physical person though. We have the eight of swords, which can, can it can, you could be feeling like bound or stuck or trap in some aspect. Um, even if it's perhaps, um, perhaps in the past, with the past lives, you did have the lovers, right? And walking away. It could have been even like um, a toxic relationship that you walked away from that may have left some deep um, scars, right? And you may not um, fully allow yourself to open up to other people because of that energy. Which has, that would in turn leave, have you feeling kind of stuck and unable to break through your own barriers here of things that were done to you in the past. But you do have the King of Cups here. So this is mastering and learning and understanding one's emotions to better work with them in the future. So it's all kind of happening for a reason and you are beloved. Prepare for your life partner. Romance is returning to your relationship. Believe you are lovable. That's kind of crazy that that came out like that. There could even be this fear of, like, say, for those of you that are, like, actually in a relationship, maybe you fear you, you're not lovable enough and want to, like, run almost. But... I mean, all your, your tarot cards here are quite beautiful. There's only one that's really, like, kind of not the greatest energy, which is this Five of Pentacles, which kind of be stuck out in the cold, lost, a little unsure of which way to go. But there is some sort of emotional contentment here with the Nine of Cups, which leads you to this, this victory, this satisfaction. So work with your emotions at this time, right? With the, the King of Cups here so that you can have emotional contentment. Working through the emotions that come up, understanding their deeper, their deeper values to you yourself, viewer. This will bring you great balance. So I want to pull you a card from the Star Seed Oracle. This deck right here. 
Healing the heart for the viewer, please, and thank you. <laughs> the cosmic heart, devotion, potency, make your life a moving prayer. The cosmic heart. When you surrender to a state of devotion, you find yourself flowing with all of life. You're being called to refocus your attention deep within. We have 48, which is 12, that Pisces energy. So Pisces is very much working with the, the emotional realms and the subconscious. Focus your attention deep within to the intelligence of your own heart, to bow with deep reverence to your inner temple to live your life in devotion to this place, to make your life one big moving prayer. Perhaps you felt a bit off kilter lately, sensing that the potency of why you're doing things has gotten a little watered down or weak. Perhaps you've forgotten what made you start doing them in the first place. If so, this is your call to take a moment and reconnect with the truth at the very center of your heart, to get back to the essence of what you're about. To devote your life to what you care most about. To turn your gaze deep, deep, deep within. There are reasons and seasons for harvesting and seasons for sowing. Right now you're being called to plant your soul seeds and sing to them with deep devotion. To feed them with the sweet waters of your own soul. To lose yourself in the potency of what it is that most expands your heart. To live your life according to what makes you come alive, rather than what everyone else thinks. To make your life one big moving prayer. How can you make your life a moving prayer? So we're going to get some closing messages of guidance from the Millennium Toth Tarot. Toth. Closing message of advice for the viewer at this time. I'm going to pull you one from the language of the flowers as well. Closing message for the viewer of this reading, please, and thank you. just have like an itchy foot so you may be the Pisces Pisces energy can be connected to the feet um, much like there are two koi fish right there are two feet and one typically represents your more feminine energy one represents your more masculine energy so they actually do this I believe in ancient Egyptian culture with the hieroglyphics um, when you see the gods and goddesses and the people of Egypt walking they they usually depict one foot moving forward over the other which would then symbolize that they worked or operated more from their feminine or masculine energies so the right foot i believe is to be said to be the masculine so that's where your energy um is coming into balance and that could make sense with this queen of wands energy right coming out with past life getting back to that like magnetic and powerful type feeling energy your self-confidence she is holding um a uh sunflower right at the solar plexus chakra which is your like your inner your inner sun right the masculine your confidence but the closing messages that want to come out overall we have the four of cups with the moon in cancer It's almost this energy of filling other people's cups will help refill your own cup. Then you have the Prince of Cups. It's carrying like a, a bowl with blue snakes in it, like blue vipers. Um... I'd almost see like the blue viper blue is more throat chakra so there's like a, um, an emotional truth that could be offered to you here or some truth coming to light so the prince of cups is connected to the the knight of cups in the traditional tarot which definitely could be an emotional offering of some sort 
Um, a lack of desire in your surroundings. Step away from what you are doing to contemplate. Allowing distractions to overpower you is the energy of the Four of Cups. A lack of desire in your surroundings. Stepping away from what you are doing to contemplate. Allowing distractions to overpower you. So I definitely understand this energy. You could just become like bored, kind of complacent in life. And you may be looking to distractions to kind of like mix it up a little bit. But with the Prince of Cups showing the signs of ambition, keeping plans tight to your heart, ability to rein in the violent tendencies while remaining calm. So it's like really getting back to your center here, grounding your energy and getting back on task. So, oh, that's kind of interesting that those are laying like that. We did have the energy of as above and so below with the magician, right? And it's just these cards are sitting here like this. <laughs> Which again, very Pisces. Things coming around to see deeper understanding. So the everlasting daisy, fortitude, be brave and dig deep. Which is your advice overall at this time, right? Digging deep into your own emotions to understand yourself on a deeper level, to heal anything within that needs to be healed. And chakra work will help with this. So when you start meditating with chakras, you'll start to see different energies, um, remember um, certain memories and that kind of thing. And you can like... You may start to see patterns of, like, choices you've made through your life or even past lives, right? That, how they affected you in your current reality. So once you start seeing those, you can kind of, like, choose by, like, it's almost like you may have a remembering and then kind of choose, like, what would happen if I chose to not do that or do something differently? Would the outcome be different? Would that um, need or desire or habit still linger there, right? So this is definitely deep, diving deep into yourself to understand your journey this far. Um, it actually came up on a reading I was watching today by another reader for Pisces, which Pisces is my north node, so I don't watch Pisces very much, but it's funny that Pisces again, right? And where was I going with that? Oh, she's, she mentioned something about a lifetime review, which I actually did one of those many years ago. I kept seeing blue stars. Like, I would, um, it's almost like I would hear a question in my head, and I would answer it. If I answered it as truthfully to my knowledge as possible, then a blue star would float away. And I see blue as the throat chakra, right? So blues typically represent our, our own truth. So if you're speaking your truth, you're doing your part. Um, especially when it's like confessionals and stuff and you're, you're divinely speaking to energies. Like you really need to be honest because what's the, what's the point of doing anything otherwise? Um, spirit sees more than what we see with our physical eyes so there's no point in trying to lie or deny parts or aspects of your journey right you own up to them and when you own up to them hopefully you don't make the same mistakes again you become stronger in what you you are worth and start to break certain patterns and cycles for yourself evolving through them so that you can have this success of your emotional contentment So now we have the foxglove. Confidence, be what you want to see. With that coming out reverse, that could almost like, um, it could almost be like by going within, starting to try to see yourself from like the level of who you want to be. Um, but there's kind of a catch 22 with that, right? Like, Yes, you want to create the version of you that you that you hope to become. But you also have to leave room for imperfections, right? Like because you may set a goal or a level for you to achieve and when you can't achieve it, if you're like struggling to achieve it, then you can beat yourself up and it can come even become even worse, right? So you kind of want to be careful with that. Like you like really need to honor and accept yourself for who you are. 
there may have been mistakes and regrets of the past, hurts and pains, especially when it comes to a matter matters of the heart with this lover's card, right? But it doesn't necessarily define who you are and doesn't need to keep defining who you are. There is a way to clear it. And with that energy, I am definitely am connected to the sacral chakra. Working with healing the sh and cleansing the sacral chakra is going to help give you a stronger foundation of self. It's kind of where your power resides. Oh, look at that. We kind of have like the sacral or solar plexus chakra and then the crown chakra here. So that is the reading I have for you at this time. I hope it resonates. If it does, please feel free to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Many blessings. Live, love, and light. Take care.